Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. So for today's video, I am going to be reviewing the brand new Jeffree Star Jawbreaker eyeshadow palette as well as one of his highlighters. I just picked them up. I'm so excited. Today was so fun playing with these. So if you're interested in hearing my thoughts on these products, then just keep watching. So today I bit the bullet and I finally got a haircut. It has probably been like a year and a half since I got my haircut. And oh my gosh, so it's like here now, which is still kind of long to you guys probably, but I always have my hair like super long and it used to be like down to here and now it's not. Um, I really do like it though. I feel really sassy. So I'm excited to see when I wash it, how my curly hair plays on it. Also, if you hear some noises in the background, it's summer. People in my neighborhood are out doing their lawn at their pools and stuff. So... <laughs> Hopefully that doesn't bother you if you do hear that. Okay, anyways, enough of me jibber-jabbering. <laughs> Let's get into it. Jeffree Star Cosmetics, before I get into the actual products, I do want to make a little bit of a disclaimer. Um, I have reviewed his products in the past, and um, I have gotten some backlash. I mean, nothing that really bothers me, but... I know people have a lot of opinions on Jeffree Star. Uh, I don't really address drama on my channel too much. For me, my channel is about the makeup and about the products. I mean, Jeffree Star, I personally don't feel any major affiliation to him at all. Uh, I, I just like his brand. I, I like that he creates different things and they're fun things and there are a lot of things that a lot of brands are afraid to do and so I pick up his products because I'm interested in his products and that is what I talk about on my channel. I think this is really the only time I'm going to address that. Like my channel is about makeup and products and that's the only thing I plan on talking about <laughs> as far as this goes. It's just makeup. So this collection released June 21st. You can get it right now on the Jeffree Star Cosmetics website. Beautylish I do believe. Um, I personally picked this up from Morphe. I think you can get his stuff from Beauty Bay as well. But <laughs> anyways, uh, so this is his summer collection. It is his Jawbreaker collection, which obviously is inspired by a Jawbreaker, which I think is really cute. So the collection has two palettes, I think four or five liquid lipsticks, three Supreme Frost, a highlighter palette, and then a few of his lip scrubs. His lip scrubs are nice, but I didn't need to purchase any. I didn't purchase any of the lip stuff, and I only purchased this highlighter because, I don't know, his things are, at the end of the day, kind of crazy, and even I don't really feel like spending money on them. I picked up the Jawbreaker palette, so this is $58. He does have a mini breaker palette, which does contain two shades from this palette in that palette. It's a 9 pan palette for $28. There is a bundle on his website where you can get both for $75. I do believe at the current moment it is sold out but $58 that is a pretty expensive price for a palette but it is his biggest palette this palette does contain 24 colors so obviously it is inspired from a jawbreaker and it comes in really cute pink jawbreaker themed packaging you open it up it has a really nice large mirror I was away this weekend and this mirror was perfect and then you have really pretty colors and it literally looks like a jawbreaker that is why everything is in a sporadic place personally and I was thinking about this earlier this would have been a lot easier to use if the colors were put together more monochromatically or like a gradient, but of course then I thought about it, it's a jawbreaker theme. Everything has to be random. So I think for the consumer, yes, it would have been easier to order it in like a gradient style, but it's a freaking jawbreaker palette, so I'm gonna stop complaining. Uh, it is really cute to look at, and I will say it is a lot cuter in person. When I saw it in person, I was like, oh, I gotta pick this up. So, like I said, this is a 24 pan eyeshadow palette. This is bigger than his other eyeshadows in the past. You get a mixture of matte and shimmers in here. I do believe some of these are a pressed pigment formula. I really do not like pressed pigment formulas, but I need to get over it. And I find his pressed pigment formula to be pretty hard to work with, honestly. And I know they say there's a specific way to apply it and I try and do it that way. I still struggle with them and it's just, it's not for me. So I'm just going to quickly show you the swatches row by row. So the top row, we have all matte shades. You have some warm shades, some base shades, and that gorgeous bubblegum shade. The second row, you have four mattes and two metallics. I love his metallic formula. These two are still amazing and so beautiful. The third row you have three mattes and three metallics. These are more unique 
colors and I really like them. And then the last row you have some more deeper colors. You also have a little bit more of your neutrals as well with four mattes and two of his metallics. So let's jump into the formulation of these, how I think they work. So this is pretty consistent with the rest of his eyeshadow formula. I do have a couple other palettes. This is basically the same. His mattes work really well. I think some work better than others. Uh, what I noticed on my tutorials is that this color and this color didn't give me as much depth as I would have liked. They just showed up a little bit different on my eye than they did in the pan. A couple of the more pastel shades you will notice that they do have a bit more fallout that's very typical with those types of shades it's not the big of a deal they blend out beautiful though they work really great wow and bubblegum right here I like these formulas because you can kind of build them up so they can come off very soft depending on what brush and what type of application you use or you can really build them up and uh, they do create a brighter color like I said earlier I'm not too keen on the pressed pigment formula that's definitely delicious and soaked and I would argue rather raspberry as well. I'm not 100% sure on that. He did not say in his video which were what, but I can tell by just me not liking them as much. They are probably pressed pigments. So no, they're not perfect, but they do give you a lot of payoff. So if you are looking for a lot of payoff, you might like that pigment formula. All of the metallics in here are absolutely stunning. They swatch beautiful. The shade Cotton Candy is a little bit chunkier chunker chunkier I don't know it's it still has a little bit more chunk than the rest of the metallic shades and what is not quite as metallic it is more of a shimmer it goes on very smooth but yeah I am loving all of these I think they are perfect in the palette I think he chose great colors to be the metallics they really complete the look so definitely the metallics in here are a 10 out of 10 overall as a palette I think this is really fun this has colors that are going to be great all year round but I don't know his summer collection last year was just so summery to me and this one is more springy to me but it is definitely fun for the summer I don't want to talk too much more about this palette I want the tutorials to kind of speak for themselves and you'll really get to see the application on this but I do really like this it's consistent with his regular formula which I do really like his regular formula. It's a very colorful palette. You can get a lot of different types of looks with it. You can argue that yes, you can get some neutral looks, but honestly, you're only gonna be using like 10% of the palette if that's the case. This is made for colorful rainbow looks. That's the type of palette it is. If you don't like colorful palettes, then I mean, don't pick this up. It's that, it's that simple. I do also really quickly wanna talk about the Supreme Frost. I do believe these are still available on his website if you wanna purchase them straight from there. This is $32, which is expensive. At the end of the day, was this worth it for me? Probably not. $32 is a lot. It does not have much of a base shade. It really is just all sparkle. Now, it is a gorgeous sparkle, but it's just not really worth it for $32. I think I'm going to love this. I'm going to love this all over my eyelid, but you will see in my demo where I talk about it a little bit more why I kind of justify that it may not be worth it because it is gorgeous, and when you do use it, it's going to be really pretty, but $32 for one shade is a lot when I'm probably not even going to use it as a highlighter. Okay, so I probably just talked your ears off. I'm just gonna go straight into the tutorials. You can see me demo them and the looks I created and okay, let me shut up. Let's go. So this first look, I'm trying to keep very warm and summery because the second look that I have coming up next, it was really blue, pink, cool toned, and it did not match my shirt at all. They were clashing. So hopefully this look matches my shirt because I'm not trying to change out of it. So the first color I'm taking right now is Virgin and I'm just gonna put that underneath to set my concealer. And this look is really, really simple. It's not too obnoxious right now. So I'm gonna start off with the shade Sick right here and this is a refer number PO7F and I'm just gonna lightly pat this on the outer corner right here and then the inner corner so as you can see we're doing more of a halo eye so boom boom and then I'm also taking an Anastasia A26 I'm taking a little bit of cone and on the other eye put this down first but I forgot but I really like this because it does have almost a warm undertone to it so it's a really nice transition shade and then I'm going to top up the inner and outer corner don't worry too much about blending right now it's just about color placement and now I'm taking just this random morphe brush that I have and I'm taking the shade Wow I feel like this color was important to try in this palette because it is a 
wow factor really um i do like this color i don't feel like it's super duper pigmented unless you really pack it on i think it is very nice for the summer and i'm just placing this in the center of my lid but this can be built up especially over a white base or if you want something a little bit more subtle and wearable um kind of the vibe i'm going for today i'm just kind of lightly spreading it up there and i'm just reapplying the inner and outer color kind of blending that in okay so next i'm taking a little bit of licorice right next to it which is almost more of a red shade and this is a refer po7e and i'm going to start to try and deepen the inner and outer corner a little bit so this color isn't really providing as much depth as i had hoped for it does fall a little flat. I think it's a pretty color on its own. Uh, it's really fun for the summer. But yeah, this look I had envisioned in my head having a little bit more depth. And this color doesn't really do it for me. TBH. Next, I'm taking the Refer P10A. I'm going to take the shade Raspberry right here. And this is just like a really pointed bullet brush. And I'm just kind of patting that color right in here. Again, same thing with this color. It didn't provide as much depth as I had hoped for, which isn't that big of a deal. But this color kind of doesn't require too much blending. Um, I'm really just placing that color, not really blending it too much. Uh, but these colors are working out really nice. They just lack a little bit in some areas. So next up, I'm taking taking on a refer number three brush lemon drop which is a shimmery gold color i love this shade if you really want to amp it up definitely use it under a glitter glue or if you use this with your finger all over the lid that's going to be a gorgeous color for now i'm just applying just a little bit of that yellow shimmer in the middle of the matte shade just to give the eye a little bit of a pop factor so you have that really neat spotlight effect which i think is really cool and we're going to finish up the lower lash line so what i'm doing is i'm going to start off with suck now going in the inner and outer corner kind of replicating what we did on the top really and i'm taking some of licorice that last color and then a little bit of raspberry which is that pink color and then we're mixing the two yellow shades I know this looks a little weird, a little different. When lashes and liner on, you will see it all come together. So I will be right back. Uh, all right, so here is the final look. Definitely a little bit different than what I normally do, uh, but it's fun. And that is what Jeffree Star Cosmetics is all about. So I'm here for it. Uh, something I also did want to demo for you guys is the Supreme Frost in Diamond Wet. Now, this doesn't really go with this look, but for the sake of this video, I'm going to show you a quick demo. This color, because I've used it a couple of times now, there isn't a base color to it. It's really just about sparkles. And I, I would argue that this is like the most sparkly one that he has. Uh, so this one, all you're really going to see on your cheek is the sparkles. So this is something I would recommend more so for the night time. Hope you can see how pretty it is. Really pretty, uh, but it's really just sparkle on your cheek. And for me personally, this really isn't something that I will be dipping into a lot just because this really isn't my vibe. It is really pretty. It is the description of the product. So I'm not going to say it's not good. Uh, it is a bit messy. You will get glitter everywhere, but it's pretty glitter. It's pretty sparkle. So it's not bad. It does what it's supposed to do. It's just my, not my cup of tea. I did pick this up more so as just like an eyelid color. It's so gorgeous when you swatch it. I was hoping that it would have a little bit more of a base color and a little less glitter, but that really is just the nature of the product. Now, the glitter isn't too chunky. It's more so sparkles, not really glitter. So don't think it's like a chunky glittery highlight, but they are definitely microfine <laughs> sparkles that you can see on your cheek. And if you do not like a sparkle highlight, you will not like this, but I definitely can see myself putting this all over the lid with any crease color honestly so this is gorgeous and it does have a place in my collection and I'm not mad that I picked this up at all with this particular look the shadows that I used were very easy to use I think the only things I was disappointed in was I felt like the darker colors weren't giving me as much depth as I had hoped for but they still work very well just be aware 
that that is how they're going to show up on your eyelid. So the colors I used for this look, I did really like. There's just those one or two things that I'm being a little bit nitpicky about. But uh, so this is the first look. I'm going to forge you to the next look that I created, which is my favorite look of the two. So yeah, let's just get into that one. So the first color that I'm going to go into is the shade Virgin right here, which is just kind of like a matte white color. It's not super bright white, so if you are worried about that, no need to be. And so I'm starting off with a Wayne Goss number 17 brush, and I'm starting off with the shade Bubblegum right here. I imagine with a Packer brush, this will show up much more bright, but if you use a blending brush, it's not as bright as it looks in the pan. Next, I'm taking an Esam S33, and we're gonna go into the shade Gumdrop. I'm very excited about this shade. I love a Lilac Lavender. This shade is more loosely packed than the other shades. It will have a little bit more fallout, but I typically don't really struggle too much with fallout on my face. Just tap your brush off and most of the time you're fine. You don't make that much of a mess. Keep these brushes in hand because you might need to reapply later. So with this next step, I did have a little bit of difficulty, nothing too bad, but I'm taking the shade Delicious right here, which is that dark navy color, and I'm using a Morphe M507, and I'm going to start packing that right in this outer corner. I'm not sure which shades in particular are the pressed pigment. Pressed pigments are typically harder to blend. You have to lay them down and then kind of blend them. I think this is a pressed pigment though because it kind of is very difficult to blend this shade if I'm being honest. Um, it does lay out good color but definitely not the easiest to work with. And I'm just doing my best to kind of work this into the eye. Now it's not that big of a deal, you can kind of leave it unblended because of the next few steps, but all you want to worry about really is getting that definition out here. So now I'm going to take my Jeffree Star concealer and I'm going to create a cut crease. So using my refer number two brush, I'm going to dig into the shade Snap. Now this is a metallic color and it comes off very icy on the eyelid. So it's not as pink as it looks in the pan, but it's freaking gorgeous. This is going to be a staple color in this palette if you're really into cut creases or adding that light shimmery color on the lid. This color is perfect for that, so I think it is a great addition to the palette. And then I'm actually going to mainly use my finger for this next color, Bite Me. This is like a really dark metallic purple. It is stunning. It's so pigmented. It sticks to the lid well because sometimes with these types of colors, you'll find that they don't really stick to the lid well. This one does fine. And now I'm going back into Delicious, and we're going to kind of reapply that to create much more of a fade. Okay, so I am done with that. I'm gonna finish the rest of my face makeup and I will be right back to complete this look. A little bit of brain freeze. Now this shade is very loosely packed. It does have some fallout, but just from that, it deposits a really nice amount of color. So this I think will be better and more easily applied with a detailed brush. Uh, I can see it kind of getting a little bit messy if you used a uh, more loose brush. So next I'm going into this shade Soaked right here. Now I'm pretty sure this is a pressed pigment. Uh, this one is very similar to the colors that were in the Blue Blood palette. And I don't like those pressed pigments. When you're just pressing them down on the lower lash line, they work great. Finally, I'm going back into Delicious. That's more so to just bring the whole look together. See how that just kind of carries down that flow right there, the gradient. I am going to take another pointy brush, and I'm going to take a little bit of bubble gum, and I want to kind of run that underneath all three of those colors that I just put on, just to kind of marry the top and the bottom together. So I'm really going to kind of just focus that more so just right underneath, and it is going to mix to kind of create a purple color which is even better. So I'm going to complete the look and I will be back to show you how everything looks. Okay, so this is the completed look. I know my shirt is totally clashing with the look, but wow, it is so pretty, if I do say so myself. So all of the details on what I'm wearing on my face will be linked in the description box down below for you to check out. I use a lot of other Jeffree Star cosmetics products that I had if it was possible. 
But yeah, this is a really pretty pink, purple, and blue look. I used about nine shades in this palette. And I gotta be honest, every single shadow that I used, I really enjoyed. It worked out very well for me. The only color that gave me a little bit of problems was Delicious right here. Just because uh, it did kind of want to stay where it was placed. So it wasn't that easy to blend. So I can see this being a problem if you do like a navy smoky eye. But for me, it was more so just about placing it and adding just a touch of definition so I could easily make it work so it really wasn't that bad so this palette definitely was working very well for me all right so that about sums it up for what I have for this video just a quick run through really quickly I do enjoy this palette quite a lot again not every shade is perfect in my opinion but it is really good and it is a nice rainbow palette is it necessary in your collection absolutely not if you are a neutral wearer this is $60 do not waste your money there's a whole lot of colorful palettes out right now it's really a trend which makes me excited because it really does inspire my creativity however it's definitely not a need it's a nice to have it's really pretty I'm happy to have it in my collection and I definitely plan on creating more looks with this guy so if you are interested in seeing the looks I create with this make sure you're following me on Instagram but now that I am out for this summer I'm gonna have more time to create different looks and really utilize my makeup more and play with these releases more. So follow me on Instagram to see me use this more because I have a lot of fun ideas for this. As far as the Supreme Frost goes, it's freaking gorgeous. It's also $32, so that's all I'm gonna say on that. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this review and demo of these two new products. Let me know down below what your thoughts are. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel already, I hope you take the time to do so, and it would be very much appreciated. So thank you guys so much for watching my video. I hope you found it helpful, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys, have a good one.